welcome to Kidney Plugged In. In this episode, we bring you part two of our interview with altruistic living kidney donor, Betty. Betty and her husband, Sam, are residents of Penticton. And Sam, a cadaveric kidney transplant recipient, has been living a full life for over a decade post-transplant. And this was Betty's motivation for becoming an altruistic kidney donor through the Parent Exchange Program. In part two of the interview, Betty shares more about what becoming a living donor has meant to her as she celebrates her 10th year anniversary as a living donor. Then from the kidney wellness hub section of Eating Well, we continue to share some quick and easy recipes from the Smart Food Swaps edition of Come Cook With Us. As our Come Cook With Us chefs, Danny Renouf and Anya Webster share tips for things from microwave popcorn to easy eggs and roasted chickpeas. And if making some time for your health and wellness is on your New Year's resolution list, we have a mindful relaxation yoga segment coming up. So get your yoga mat ready for later in the show. And get ready to mark encounters as we give you an update on upcoming kidney wellness obsessions that you'll want to hear more about. So stay with us because all of this and so much more is coming up next right here on Kidney Plugged In. It's so wonderful to be back here together with my dear friend and co-host Anya um, to, to go through smart food swaps, right? Lots of ways to be smart in the kitchen, <laughs> but you've got a few ideas for us. So we're going to be swapping some salt for some herbs and spices today. We're going to be swapping that oven for the microwave. So yeah, without further ado, should we jump right in? So we're going to do microwave popcorn. So I, I just, all I need for this trick is a lunch bag. So you can get just a paper bag like this. Oh, I didn't measure this. It's okay, I know what a third is. It's, this is a bit more. I have a third of a cup of popcorn. So that's probably good. And then um, that's all I'm gonna do because I'm gonna pop my popcorn first. So I fold it over twice. I pop it plain in the microwave and then I'm gonna add my fixins after. So how much do you think a bag of popcorn that you buy one of those microwave bags at this door? Are they, what, a dollar fifty each, probably? Easy. They're really this expensive. This is like 35 cents. Because yeah. the popcorn in the kernels are very inexpensive. And popcorn's a really good high fiber snack, right? So three cups of popcorn is going to be a serving of carbs and they're good high I fiber snack. I use popcorn as my carbs because as, as I mentioned, I don't, I can't eat gluten. So I use popcorn a lot as my carb really when I'm eating and <laughs> <laughs> eating things. It's delicious. I know, it's so good. It's my excuse that it's my carb source. So I'll eat like a lot of popcorn and I'll, yeah, put uh, some olive oil with it and some spice blends. Um, I'll do cinnamon popcorn uh, with oil, you know, coated. You just need to like have some oil to coat the, the kernels in. But so that's gonna pop for, you know, I found Depending on your microwave, you might have to redo the popping. Okay, I don't know if we can zoom in. Do you want to flavor it? You want to just show it like it oh, is? Oh yeah, this is such a pretty way just to eat it plain, just straight out of the bag. Um, so this is, mm, it smells, smells amazing. <laughs> you could also, um, we'll grab a fresh bowl here. I'll grab a white one, sorry. You could just take a, a bit of oil. Maybe and, shake it up in there, hey? Yeah, what are you, I mean, yeah. I'm gonna just show you this because I wanted to blend it with the spices. So you just take a bit of oil, coat the bottom. So, and I, I like the Mexican uh, blend for this one because it's a bit spicy. Just put a bit in and swirl it around. And then, oh, this is so yum. I'll just add the popcorn in. Oh, who needs a spoon? Go ah, you're gonna do it with I your fingers. I think I'm gonna go with my hands. Okay, no, maybe not. I'm on camera. I should behave. <laughs> I should behave. You can reuse the paper bag a few times to pop a few batches. Um, the other thing that is uh, possible is you can use a pot to make popcorn on the stove. So look how pretty this blend looks on the uh, popcorn. It's so beautiful to look at. 
It smells amazing and you're getting tons of great flavor and great nutrition as well. Leave me a message and I'll get back to you. Oh, I can't believe it's been almost 20 years since we met. My whole life has changed. Whenever I felt alone, you were there for me. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I couldn't have done it without the Kidney Foundation. And now, I need you more than ever. Previously on Kidney Plugged In, our interview with Penticton resident and altruistic living kidney donor, Betty. So thank you for taking time out of your busy holiday schedule today to talk about the gift of life. There is no greater gift you can give during the holidays, is there? Can you tell us a little bit about what motivated you to do that? Well, that, that one's easy. Uh, my husband was diagnosed with kidney disease in 2005 and waited four years before uh, he got a transplant. And so I was not a match for him. I couldn't help him directly, but I could do, go on a paired exchange program with him. That didn't work out. We ended up with a, a deceased donor. When I saw the results of Sam getting a kidney, the results were immediate. He was able to do things that he hadn't been able to do for years, and he wasn't freezing cold anymore, and all those other things. So my motivation was sitting right there in front of me, day in and day out, that if somebody did that for Sam, I could certainly do that for somebody else. So 2013, I donated a kidney. You went through the paired exchange after your husband received a kidney and did it altruistically. I paired with uh, Laura. And uh, Laura had very high sensitivity, so she was going to be a tough match. We knew that going to the onset. And I was hitting on 65, and I'm starting to think my kidneys probably are not going to be as pristine as they might be for somebody else to, to donate to. I talked to St. Paul's about it, and I, and I spoke to the transplant nurse there, and I said, these are my concerns. The last thing you want to do is tell Laura that I'm going to drop the paired exchange program. That's a hope that you never want to get rid of having been on the other end of that with Sam. But she said, you know, it's, it's up to you. She will be a hard sensitivity to, to match. So, you know, it could be could be a week, could be years. You don't know. Anyhow, I decided at that point that I would go off the paired exchange program and just donate a kidney anonymously. And the good news about that is Laura got her kidney about two weeks later. So the, there you go. You know, it, it could have been, it could have been a paired exchange, could have been how it happened. And so it was a, it all, it all worked out. The Apparent Exchange is an amazing program. Though. If you've ever been touched by somebody who has had kidney disease and has gone through what my husband went through, and he's, he wasn't alone. There was lots and lots and lots of others in worse shape than he was even. Um, but if you are able in some way to help in any way, just I, I, it, it is just the most magnificent feeling in the world to know that somebody else is is uh, living a life. I'm assuming still living a life, I don't know, but um, that's a crapshoot you don't know about when you donate it anonymously and you don't get to know. Uh, but it is certainly, um, it is the most rewarding thing you'll ever do in your life. It's, it is just absolutely amazing. And now we continue with part two of our interview with altruistic living kidney donor, Betty. Welcome back to Kidney Plugged In, Betty. It's nice to see you again. So here we are in 2024. I hope you and Sam both had a wonderful holiday season. But how is Sam doing these days? Sam's doing well. He's had some other issues, but it has nothing to do with his kidney. So that's a good thing. Yeah, he's doing very well. Kidney function is staying right up there where it needs to be. And got him for another, got him for 10 more years. And, uh, you know, so that's pretty good too. And yeah, still going. <laughs> still going, yeah. Someday. I don't know, but yeah, that was mostly it's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good, yeah. To have, it's good to have him by my side. It's good to have him by my side. Is there something you'd like to add that I haven't asked? You know, it's a, it's been a long time, and so you kind of you know you don't forget about the the details so much as the, the overwhelming um, uh, feeling, the overwhelming uh, sense of of doing something that not everybody can do or wants to do. Um, but it's really a lot easier than most people might think. And it's certainly, uh, certainly in my case, I can't speak for everybody, but it was very safe. I always felt well cared for. I always felt uh, people looking after me, you know, making sure I was fine. And so uh, 
in that respect, I could I can I can say that it's a it's a worthwhile endeavor for sure. Yeah, that's all you have to do is meet somebody that's had a kidney or any kind of a transplant, I guess. In that respect, you meet somebody that's got one of those things, and you suddenly say, hmm, "I could do something like that." Yeah, that was easy. I wonder if you'd expand a little bit more on the process and the testing that you went through prior to um, the transplant. Okay. Yeah, that that wasn't so much fun. I mean, like it's just a lot, and it's constant, you know. And I guess it's you do it every year, and or sometimes I think it counts as every three months or every six months, something like that. I can't remember now. And then I guess when the hospital knew Sam was getting close, then all of a sudden the testing ramped up, but we didn't know why. I mean, like, why wouldn't we know why? I mean, like, that's never done it before. If I had to do it again, I'd know why, but you can't have it now. You can't, I've only got one, I'm keeping this one for a bit. Um, but yeah, the testing the testing was kind of brutal. Uh, but then again, I don't like hospitals or needles or x-rays or any of that stuff. So for me, it was a little bit more challenging than some of the others, maybe, I don't know. Um, I, yeah, I just kind of found, a, why do they keep doing this? You know, like, it, I, I guess what they were, I, I understood why they were doing it. They wanted to make sure that I was still eligible for a, a donation. And so they have to keep track of that, fair enough. But it, it seemed excessive to me. It, but then again, like I said, I'm not I'm not good at hospitals or any of that stuff. So, you know, get me in, get me out. When I donated my kidney, I went in on a Monday and I was out on Wednesday, two days later. So I was tired, but I was, I was out and I walked back into the hospital the following day to go talk to the transplant coordinator and say, I'm still here, you know, like, and that was, I was, couldn't wait to get home and get back in bed though, because I was, really tired, but, but I did it, you know, it's a, I'm kind of stubborn that way. Anyway, so that, that tells you, you can get out and walk around and everything else very easily. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's all and, good. But the testing, but the testing was, for me, it was difficult, but it was, I mean, it wasn't, none of it hurt or any of that other stuff. It was just, I don't know, it was just challenging for me personally. And so were you able to have the laparoscopic surgery for the yes. removal? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That makes, that makes it. That makes it pretty why easy. Why you were walking that yeah. far in two days? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Just, uh, yeah. They treated everybody so well, you know, and uh, it, was, it was pretty nice. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know what else I could say. It's just, it's been so long that you just kind of. It's not. It's it's, uh, it's it's always kind of with you, but it's not it's not paramount anymore. You know. Right. That's okay. good. Yeah. My alarm goes off every 12 hours and I know that Sam's going to take some meds and he's pretty much on that anyway now, but it's obviously a reminder there that, you know, that's keeping him alive. I'm fine with that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's all I, I really have to say, Teresa. It's just, it's, uh, uh, it, it, when I think back at it, because I haven't really given it this much, this much thought for a long time that it's, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's an amazing, amazing thing to do something for somebody else like that. Yeah, you can do it. Did you know that 77% of Canadians waiting for a transplant are waiting for a kidney? And that the average wait for a kidney transplant from a deceased donor is 3.5 years. Did you know that you can be part of the solution? Every year, living people donate one of their kidneys to help someone suffering from advanced renal failure who needs a transplant to regain their health. In fact, 29% of adult kidney transplants are made possible by living kidney donors. And more than 53% of all adult living donors are not blood relatives to the recipient. Are you considering being a living kidney donor and wish to speak with a mentor who's been through the experience? The Living Donor Mentor Program is available for anyone who is considering being a living kidney donor to a recipient in BC or the Yukon. This free peer support program offers to match potential living donors with mentors who've already donated a kidney. Contact the BC and Yukon branch for more information. And now you know. So uh, next recipe is going to be the microwave egg. So I've got my egg in a mug. Um, so I've got two large eggs, tablespoon of milk, and um, just a touch of oil because I don't want it to stick. Not oil. You have it, it's right there. 
So just a, just a touch. A little more. A little, a little more than a touch. Two touches. Okay, okay. there we okay. go. Thank you. A European touch. I know. So I'm just kind of, you know, using the fork here to, to get it all happy and incorporated. And then I will use my microwave. You do need a microwave for this one. If you didn't have a microwave and you wanted to do your oven, you could make a batch of these as well. So you want to use your whole, whole carton of eggs. You could use 12, pop them in. You want to really spray your muffin tin. Or one thing I really think is a good investment is those silicone muffin cups. Yes. Put those in your liner. Oh my goodness. And they're going to save your life. And pop them in the oven, bake them. You can then freeze these eggs when they're made. You can freeze them in the pucks or you can I'll probably take away from that. But, or you can make them into bagels or egg McMuffins yeah. and freeze them like that. That's, that's such a great tip. Um, I love the egg muffins uh, in the oven. If you have more people in your household and you wanna do like a batch, the egg muffins are really a great way to go. They're, they're a wonderful option. So that's just kind mm. of happily going along in the microwave uh, for a couple Hello. of minutes. Yes, yeah. two minutes? Yeah. Speaking of these chickpeas that we used in the salad, and the colors are so beautiful. Part of joyful eating, right? Part of feeling really good about the food you're eating is the color, it's the eye appeal. You see all the different colors already represented in this salad. And you know, it's already making me hungry. So, so that's our so salad. Pretty. So it looks so pr pretty. So pretty. What I'm gonna do when I want it for lunch tomorrow, you can shake it up uh, and then the dressing will hit it. You can also pop, pop it in a bowl or in a plate just to dress it a little bit nicer. Um, but yeah, and then you pop it in your lunch kit with a, what's that thing called? The freezer pack. An the ice freezer pack. Ice pack. An ice yeah. pack um, yeah. and, and take it with you to yeah. work, okay? Another thing you can do is marinate these chickpeas. Um, so you can just use your favorite spices. So say you wanted to use some curry spice blend, you could just do that and then add uh, some oil and a little bit of acid. So you could add um, uh, lemon juice. Uh, we have some lemons I've lost. Hey, look at us throwing an extra recipe in. I know, just for <laughs> you, just because we're waiting. Just because we're waiting, just for the crowd. And then that's you it. You can marinate these and eat them like this, throw them in the salads, or you can, again, we're not using the oven today. Yeah. But all the things you can do we with the oven. We miss our oven, yeah, <laughs> clearly. You can then roast them, and then they're also great on top of the salad or like croutons on top of your soups um, or just a snack again another protein snack should Wonderful. I grab it for you well you know the thing about this is that sometimes you need a bit more time with it um, I actually think we nailed it I just sort of check. show them we should I, didn't show them before and how much it puffs up when you're I, I just can you get that Sorry. do you see that here yeah, yeah. So perfect. So it's coming, peeling off the sides and there's no extra liquid. Oh, this is perfection. This is great. I'm just gonna grab a dish so I can show you. And I just, all I do is I tip it over like that. And I've got my, sorry, it's a bit hot. Look how cute. I've got my little egg souffle. And then what I might do, right, is Who's friends with parsley? Me. Grab some parsley and just like that. And then maybe some tomato slices if I'm feeling really good or cucumbers or my salad in a jar goes with that. Or your oats too, right? Just, yeah. just gonna give you a bit more protein if you did your oats without yeah. the... Um, not so better. That, oh my goodness. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Is and it there, almost my bedtime? <laughs> and there's no salt. Where's the salt, yeah. right? There's just no salt at all. Um, you do need a really good microwave cup, so um, just make sure you make have sure that. Make sure it's microwave safe. Yeah, so it doesn't blow up in the microwave. And don't just use a whole egg, right? Mm -hmm. You gotta crack it, it'll explode. Yeah. So don't try to do it with a whole egg. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, That's right. Those are my safety tips for the day. Safety tips for the day. And you can use these spices, change up the taste. I made two curry, um, two spice blends to use in my cooking. 
One is a Mexican spice blend and one is a Mexican uh, curry spice blend. I love having these on hand. You can use them instead of salt. You can use them instead of carrying a whole bunch of spices in your cupboard. Daddy and I were talking about how we love to use them when we're traveling too. Sometimes if you're staying in an Airbnb or a place that has their own kitchen, you get there and you want to cook something and you can't because all you've got is salt and little packages of salt and pepper usually. So I love these. And then I also really like making our own spices because then you can cater them to your taste. So for mm -hmm. example, the curry powder, I didn't use as much cumin because my family doesn't like it. I love it, mm -hmm. but they don't like it as much. So some of the traditional already made curry blends are a little bit too cumin-y. So mm -hmm. love them. You can use them in curries. You can use mm -hmm. them in your rice dishes, everything that you want. Just throw it on different Great. flavors in there. Right. I love mm. chili powder, curry powder on my eggs. You're really right. Good. I could have completely done that. Um, and that's a great uh, addition. I just, yeah, I just kept it really simple, but absolutely, what a great idea. I should have done that. Next time I'll do that. Can you imagine losing most of something without realizing it? Over time, kidney disease can destroy up to 80% of kidney function before you notice any symptoms. Talk to your family doctor to see if you're at risk and need to be screened. It could save your life. And now, it's time to grab a chair or roll out your yoga mat and join Amy for some mindful relaxation. To start, find a tall seat. You can sit in a chair or on the floor or even lay down. Find a tall, wherever you are, lengthen your spine and have your shoulders down away from your ears. Option to close your eyes, to draw your energy inward. Take a few moments here to just notice your breath. Feel the rise and fall of your belly. The expansion of your chest on the inhale. And the gentle contraction on the exhale. Samavritti is where we count equal breath in, equal breath out. I will be counting four, count in, four count out, then up to five, up to six, then down to five and down to four again. But if at any point this becomes too intense, come back to your normal breath or just go down to two or three, as long as you maintain equal inhale, equal exhale. Let's begin. Have your eyes closed. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, six, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. 
Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Release. Come back to your normal breath. Noticing the inhale. Noticing the exhale. I hope you enjoyed this short breath work class, focusing on clearing the mind. Thank you for joining us today. I look forward to seeing you back here at the Kidney Wellness Hub soon. Namaste. New on the Kidney Wellness Hub this January, we have Nia Dance Breaks Wednesdays at lunchtime until February 7th. Plus, continuing classes on Art for Wellness with Daniela and Brooke. Friday evenings at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time until the end of April. So join us, make some time for fun, and register for these live classes today. Can't make these classes fit into your schedule? No problem. The Kidney Wellness Hub has over 70 on-demand classes and videos for you to explore in sections like staying active, eating well, mental well-being, and socially connecting. Don't forget to join up to receive updates on new classes and events that are being added all the time. The Kidney Wellness Hub is here to help you along your wellness journey. Hope to see you online soon at kidneywellnesshub.ca. Speaking of Danny making spice blends, so this is what Danny likes to give us for Christmas and what I love using. <laughs> Every year we've gotten little curry blends. So also something you can do, you can make these at home and they can be your little yeah, hostess gifts smart. or easy gift uh, to share as well. So there you go. Thank you, Danny, for that reminder because <laughs> she does do that for us. <laughs>